Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Set, Power of the Elements Okay, so in this historic set video, we're going, I'm going to introduce to you Power of the Elements. It truly was a set that was elemental in nature. Not just that, it had a release date of August 4th, 2022, introducing Telements and Sprite. This was indeed the set that really introduced to us what is considered the strongest archetype of all time, T-Elements. Indeed, that is the case. And would be in, and, would, and it would introduce Tier 0 archetypes, which would be prevalent and to this very day, two years later. Indeed, Power of the Elements is a set that has just completely entered Yu-Gi-Oh! into just an elemental phase in terms of power. You are absolutely right! Did we just enter, you know, the Avatar, the last airbender in terms of power scaling? I think we did. Just the power levels of decks from this point forwards, archetypes from this point forward has been absolutely... Insane is not even a word, just absolutely diabolical and just power scaling has just balancing, power scaling and all those things, effects have just completely been tossed out the window and it's just anything goes, just make it as silly and as ridiculous as you want. You don't get to play, you just lose. I think the R&D team are just having a, a blast, you know, a fun time in just creating cards that just go... Screw it, we'll just... Indeed, that's just the case, because the cards from this set are just absolutely ridiculous. And to this day still, a lot of cards from this set have hit the ban list. Most of them have been banned, limited, and so on. So, with that being said, let's continue on with the rest of this video. Legacy support. Melfi, Rika, Branded, Scareclaw, Therion, Exorcista, and Mathmech. First of all, let's talk about Mathmec, because Mathmec got a little card called Mathmec Circular. Uh, Mathmec's entered the meta scene and they were a tier 2 deck, they weren't very important. The effect of Mathmec Circular has been so powerful that Konami has been copy-pasting that effect to other archetypes that we've gotten in the future. We're now dubbing it the Circular Effect. That's really convenient. We have our wild card Garura Wings of Resonant Life. Garura here is a card that added life back to Super Poly. Facts. So bear that in mind that just Garura's existence has forced combo decks and combo players to play around it so they don't get Super Polyed. Okay, and so we have our value card, Starlight Rare, Kurikara Divine Carnet. Indeed, this at the time of its release then, especially the Starlight version, was worth a pretty penny. It did see play during the next format after this, T Elements format, which was Kashtura format. But outside of Kashtura format, this card just hasn't seen play since then. That really hits where it hurts. Um, even now it doesn't see play. It is a shame because, I mean, it's so early play in um, beginning of sneak eye format and then just fell off as other hand traps just were better and could do more so that's something that needs to be taken into consideration and i don't think much can be said about this as a value card i think it just was really expensive um potentially just a one hit wonder and we've never seen its use again who knows maybe it's going to come into prevalence in the future but i would definitely say it's a card worth getting for anyone who's uh interested in getting a card like this and would have a place in your deck in the near future definitely get it now while it's nice and cheap and well as cheap as it's gonna get anyway let's uh, move on Alrighty, so let's grade this set this set will be graded a as for amazingly beautiful and you might have wondered to yourself, wow, why is this an A slash set? Um, it's, it's A because it's a good set for sure, but it isn't, it wasn't broken. There was a lot, uh, it wasn't a set that was, um, I would say, 
went up and beyond to become an exceptional set for the time to be S tier. Because there was another set that came out that released, um, you know, the Ishizu stuff that made the elements quite broken. As he said, this was a really good set and brought a lot to the table for Yu-Gi-Oh! The, arc, the archetypes and cards in this set are so powerful to this very day. A lot of cards from this set are banned or limited. A very revolutionary set for the game and definitely a set that if you are interested in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s um, history, is a set worth, worth getting. Um, even though most of the cards in it are limited or banned now, that's not to understate the impact that it has had on Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. If we look at a lot of these um, archetypes in this set, I think the only archetype and I th that has was a little bit too extreme was T-Elements, but even T-Elements, um, for what it would do, was quite balanced. It was when it was paired up with Ishizu that it just went out of control. But as a, but as a mill deck, as a uh, Light Swan deck, similar, which was a bit more consistent, it wasn't that bad. And I actually liked T Elements as a deck. I definitely feel T Elements isn't a bad or obnoxious deck, but it was when it was paired up with uh, Ishizu, which came uh, two months later in another set, that T Elements was completely out of control and it just, and it was just completely chaotic and just complete mess. But make no mistake, it's a great and well-designed uh, archetype, well-designed deck, in my opinion. And it's a philosophy of, uh, of a deck, which it's a shame we don't see more of it in our current design or future design and just having a bit more obnoxious playstyles. One of the reasons why uh, t -Elements is really was really good was it wasn't so expensive, you know, to get it. It wasn't, it didn't really hurt the piggy bank so much. It rewarded skillful gameplay. As to pilot T element, you really needed to know Yu-Gi-Oh quite well. You couldn't just um, take the deck and just pilot it and just play it just for the sake of playing it. Loads of things about it brought a lot of skill to the game, a lot of stuff to the table. And if we leave the Ishizu part of it aside that came a few months later, Telements, Sprite, and all of these archetypes were great for uh, the game. They brought, they definitely increased the skill level for the players who played these decks. And and I feel these were the sort of decks that made you better as a player if you played them more. Definitely, um, they were like the dark soul of decks for Yu-Gi-Oh. And I think that's all I've got to say, really. So. Tune in next time for more sets that we'll co I'll cover here on the historic set side of things. And hopefully, uh, you know, you get this set for the nostalgia or just for historic purposes. That's all I've got to say. Hope to see you soon. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.